The Berlin Wall is gone. But while it stood, Peter Clausen, the United States Information Agency officer attached to the American Embassy to the German Democratic Republic, learned to hate it. The embassy is in East Berlin, and part of Clausen's job was to help bring that wall down. It's a little bit hard to grasp what it's like living behind the wall, behind the Iron Curtain, because we're not trapped in. Clausen's job is to make information about America available to East Germans, and it's sometimes a tricky task. The most difficult thing about working in an Eastern Bloc country is avoiding paranoia. You are vulnerable. But the trick is to know that it's there, but to ignore it, so that you don't start, when somebody comes up to you at a party, you're going, he invited me to the summer house. Is he going to try to co-op me there? You re have to evaluate those things on a human level. Uh, gut reaction is what they often tell you to go on. Is this a sincere thing? Is this a forced thing? I think of both. What could you tell me? He travels throughout East Germany with a variety of missions. For USIA officers not only fulfill their specific tasks, but act as part of the embassy's information gathering network, functioning always as the eyes and ears of the State Department. To make more people interested in coming. So Clausen talks with graduate students at Karl Marx University in Leipzig to find out what their interests are and how the USIA can help meet them. We should do different. People in general are interested in the culture more than in the poli politics of America. In culture. In culture. culture. This is the basic mm. interest, I'd say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was hat der Jude Gott denn vorzugreifen? Gott! The arts and information can travel a two-way street which is why Clausen finds himself listening to the director of the Berliner Ensemble making a plea that the famous theater group, which has never appeared in the U.S., be invited to perform in New York. Although my job is to bring culture from the United States here and not the other way around, you end up transmitting messages, you end up transmitting uh, information back and forth like that. Ambassador Francis Meehan listens to Clausen's report with particular interest. For Peter has a certain savvy and experience that perhaps extends his skills beyond his basic USIA assignment. One of the things that amazed me from the beginning was that I'd gotten into the Foreign Service, that I passed the security inspection and everything. And I had worked for the McCarthy campaign in 68, at one point was involved with the Socialist Workers' Party. And I put all this stuff down on my form. I mean, there's nothing I've ever hidden from anybody. I was a conscientious objector during the Vietnam War. And he thought, I was the most unlikely to, uh, sort of political type to, to join the Foreign Service, particularly during the Republican administration. Fat or thin? Fuller than me, I think. Before joining the Foreign Service, Clausen was an actor. Today, he maintains his involvement with the theater by directing a West Berlin amateur repertory company. He said you were fat. Bring it in then. Okay. The ring, do you remember? He met his wife, Leslie, when they were both on stage. She has since modified her career to further his and has herself found a job working in the embassy. But the demands on a Foreign Service spouse, though considerable, are not as extreme as they once were. The worst thing about being in the Foreign Service is every year or two years or three years, just when you begin to feel comfortable in a place and know where things are located, make friends, get involved in things in a real way, and you have to start all over again. Having a job helps immensely. I can't see myself being a career wife, and Peter has never tried to force me into that role. I've never been able to perform the social obligations that are necessary to be some kind of adjunct to the officer. But that's not necessary anymore either. The service has changed so much. It used to be that spouses were rated on their husband's performance records, um, but that, that's gone by the wayside. In Schwerin, a city in the northwest of the GDR, a theater group is doing Faust. The modern dress production is pushing the limits of political acceptability, and Clausen needs to see it for it is an early symptom of the enormous upheaval that in a few short months will be bringing down the wall itself. 
they were taking a lot of political risks with the production because in one case there was a scene where they were talking about uh, freedom forever or something like that is a line from from Goethe and at that time they let a balloon go on stage and it flew off into the air now audience then shortly after that somebody escaped from East Germany to West Germany using a balloon every time the balloon goes off the audience applauds remembering freedom forever the guy took off and flew away there were all sorts of lines like that where the audience is responding to specific political references today. The pride of East Germany is that the country feels it has exercised the demons of fascism, that it has cast out the malignancy of lingering Nazism far more effectively than is West Germany. Yet even in a country with such standards, blind spots exist. The decision was made to separate the GDR from all of the vestiges of Germany. But then, every Wednesday, the changing of the guard ceremony, they've got the, the helmets, the goose step, and they've got to know what that looks like. Lest anyone forget, East Germany has turned what was once a concentration camp at Sachsenhausen into a memorial museum. Peter Clausen is an American, but his parents were born in Germany. When I was in third grade um, in the United States, a school friend took me home to his house after school. His parents were out, and we, you know, we messed around in his father's dresser drawer, I think, looking for dirty pictures or something, I don't know. And we found uh, some photographs that he had taken as a soldier liberating one of the camps at the end of the war. And sort of very matter-of-factly like kids do, that my friend turned to me and said, this is what your folks did. This is what your parents did. And that was really the first time that, that I was aware of what kind of what went on here, what went on in Germany during the war. It was interesting that it was 1961 that they decided to turn Sachsenhausen into a memorial because it was the same year they built the wall. Those fortifications, the function in both cases was the same, to keep people inside. I'm trying to promote contacts between the two countries and I'm aware that the reasons that our relations aren't better are pretty solid reasons on both sides. The wall, the way the GDR treats people who don't fit into the system that they've got going here. The United States as a whole is a marvelous place for people to be different. And countries like this limit that because they're scared of something in people. And I would like to see the contact maybe alleviate a little bit of that fear.